I've just been watching two great crested greaves on what is a super water for the angler to try his hand at carp fishing. It's about six acres in size and it's an interesting water because it's got lots of bays and islands. It's shallow, heavily coloured and it's got many carp in it. I'm told by Bill Turner who runs the water that there's 500 carp been put in in the last five years. So you can see it's very heavily stocked. To find this sort of carp water you need to contact your local fishing club or go to your local tackle shop or speak to anglers and uh, I'm sure you will be able to locate this type of water. I've already set my gear up in the swim around the corner so we'll see if we can catch one. The swim we are going to fish today was chosen for several reasons. Firstly, there were several features such as islands, gravel bars and overhanging trees. In addition, the light prevailing wind was blowing into the same area. All of these features attract carp. Right, we've got two rods already set up, ready to go, so we'll just run through how we're going to fish. First rod is going to be using boilies. It's the most common bait used for carp. About 90% of carp in the country are caught on them. They're small balls of high protein food, mixed with eggs, rolled and boiled. And the main advantages of these is that small fish such as roach and bream don't usually take them. You can buy them from any fishing tackle shop. Most shops have got a selection available. You can make your own, but there's no need to. Ready-made boilies are very effective. So we'll just have a look on the setup on this one. This is the boilie rod. The rig is nothing too technical. It's a sliding lead, about an ounce and a quarter in this case stopped by a bead and a swivel. About an 18 inch hook link. A smallish hook, size eight, partridge, hair rig hook. With one boilie attached by what we call the hair method, hair rig method. In this case, about half an inch piece of light nylon. I've actually gone through the boilie with a needle and this light line of about a pound and a half breaking strain and I've tied it to the bottom of the hook. There are other variations of the hair rig but this is a good basic simple way to start. The line is nine pounds breaking strain all the way through and uh, I think that's ideal for this water. We've got a few islands out here with one or two uh, trees hanging in the water so we can't afford to use lighter line than this. So we'll just pop this one out to where I've already put some ground bait. I've already catapulted about 25 boilies out to my left here, about 25 yards out. So we'll just cast that one out there. Now, the important thing to do at this stage is to make sure that your clutch is adjusted correctly. Every time you cast out, or every time you've caught a fish, just check that your clutch is set correctly. You don't want it too loose, because you, you won't be able to strike the fish properly. You don't want it so tight that when you hook a fish, you can't give it line and it breaks you up. So it's important to check the clutch at this stage. OK, that's correct. We'll just put that on the rod rests. What I've got here is Bitec Viper bite alarms and a sliding type indicator on a needle. All standard stuff used by carp anglers. Just put the indicator on. Just a matter of putting the line behind the needle. And then we'll switch the 
electronic bite alarm on. And now that's ready for taking fish. The clutch is adjusted correctly. One thing here to mention, I'm using Shimano bait runner reels, which are excellent reels. I've actually got the bait runner on, so the fish can take line. If you don't use this type of reel, then you've got to open the bail arm, like so, and put the line in what we call a line clip above the reel. But as I'm using Shimano bait runners, I can shut the bail arm. and just fish it like so. Right, on the other rod, I'm using what we call a particle bait. The four most common particle baits are sweet corn, chickpeas, which are these, peanuts, and tiger nuts. Now these are in packs from tackle shops, ready cooked. You can buy them in bulk quantities in sacks, but the main thing to remember about particle baits is they must be cooked properly. If you throw them in the lake uncooked, you will kill the carp. They will still come along and eat them, but once they're in the stomach of the fish, they will swell up, put the fish in distress, and they will probably die. So it's very important to have particle baits cooked. Sweet corn's okay straight from the can, but these other types of baits, they must be fully cooked. We'll just run through the basic setup on the particle rod. Again, it's an ordinary sliding ledger rig. Again, about an ounce and a quarter lead, because I'm not fishing far out. If I'm fishing a long way out, it would need a two or even three ounce lead, a bead and a swivel, just like the other rod. Hook link about 12 inches to start with. I'm gonna fish with chickpeas on this rod. I'm just starting with one on the hook, one on the size four. It's a fairly lightweight hook, partridge hook again. And then we might have to change this while we're fishing. We'll see what happens. We might have to put it on a hair rig like the boily rig if we're getting bites that are not developing properly. So that's the particle rig, which we'll cast out. I've already put some chickpeas out in front of me alongside a little island. So we'll put this one out amongst them. Like so. Same setup as on the other rod. Electronic bite alarm. And an indicator. We'll put the reel on bait runner. I've already set the clutch on that reel. I've got the bait runners on so the fish can take the line so it's nice and safe. So we'll just sit back and hope that we can get some action. The landing net had been set up earlier which was just as well because we were soon into a fish. Yes, we've got one on here. It was uh, trying to get in the trees then. A take on the boily rod. I'll just lower that one into the water so the line sinks. Doesn't feel a bad fish. Main thing when you're playing the fish is to keep the rod up nice and high. Keep a bend in the tip. Don't let it go straight. Keep a steady pressure on the fish. Make sure the clutch is okay in case the fish lunges. This feels a reasonable fish. When you're pumping the fish, when you're lowering the rod, keep the rod tip bent so you never give the fish a slack line. I'll just let the clutch off a bit now because this fish is coming closer. 
just to, for safety's sake in case it lunges. Oh, yes, it looks a nice double. Yeah, got it. Now that made it uh, quite an easy capture. That makes it look very easy. It's not always that easy. We've only been cast out a few minutes. We'll just bring it onto the unhooking mat. Oh, it's a very pretty fish. That certainly is a beautiful fish. What a lovely mirror. Nice big scales along the flank. What a lovely fish. Looks about 12 pounds. Quite lively too. That picked up the uh, maestro honey syrup boilies that we put out. Obviously they like that bait. Just put that rod out of the way. It's best to put the rod back on the rest. Don't want any accidents treading on the rod or anything. Just look at that. What a beautiful fish. What a lovely fish. As I was admiring the fish, I heard the bait run on my other rod and leapt into action. <laughs> Quite amazing. What a prolific water. It's a very lively fish. I wouldn't like to say how big it is. But as I said before, keep the rod up high. Don't let the line go slack. These are 11 foot rods. Compound taper means they bend right through. Carbon fibre, and the fish is coming close, which gives me a bit of a problem. I think what I'll do, uh, I'll just play that fish lightly, and I'll pop this one into the bag using one hand. This doesn't normally happen in carp fishing, but it can happen. I'll just pop that into the weigh bag. And what we'll do is we'll just leave that in the margins so a little bit of water can keep on the fish because we need the landing net again. Right, just tighten up the clutch slightly. It's very important at this stage to concentrate on what you're doing. You mustn't make a mistake. You mustn't have the clutch too tight. And don't be tempted, because you've got it near the net, to try and drag it over the net quickly. You just, just need a lot of patience. I'm oh, just letting the clutch off a little bit there, because it was lunging. When it's on the top like this, this is when the hook can come out, if it's a poor hook hold. It's another nice mirror. We'll just gently ease it in. And we'll slip the net underneath. And it's important not to lift the net until you're sure it's, the fish is over the net properly. Just get the net under it first. And then if you're happy that the fish is over the net and it's not going to shoot off, then you can lift the net. Right, we're putting the net under and we're lifting. Lovely. This landing net's a super one for the fish. It's got a fine mesh bottom to it, which doesn't damage the fish. It's 
straight onto the unhooking mat so it can't damage itself. We won't bother to weigh this one because we've got the bigger one in the sling. What a lovely fish. Every carp's different, every scale pattern's different. Certainly on mirrors anyway, on commons they tend to look similar, but just put that one back on there. You notice the importance of having the bait runner on, because while we were looking at the first fish, there was a run on the second rod, and it could take line quite safely. Right, as I say, we won't weigh this fish, but it's a real pretty fish. It's making some funny noises. <laughs> a very long, thin mirror. Let's have a look at the other side. Fighting fit. Seven or eight pounds in weight. Lovely fish. Right, we'll just pop him back in the in the lake. It's best to carry him back to the water in the way bag, but as the way bag is holding the other fish, I'll just keep this low. Keep it nice and low to the ground, just in case it, you drop it accidentally. And we'll just slip it back. Nice and gently. There it goes. <laughs> right, we've got the other fish in here still. <laughs> right. Oh, zero the scales, which means we've got to take the weight of the weighing sling off afterwards. The weigh bag weighs about a pound. Just over 11 pound, about 11.4, something like that. So it's a double. It is quite unusual to hook two fish at once. If there's no one close by to help, don't panic. Either do as I have, or open the bow arm and put the rod back in its rest while you deal with the fish on the bank. At all times in carp fishing, the welfare of the fish comes first. Correct handling will ensure that the fish will stay in the superb condition that you see here. The fish went away strongly and the action continued. It's certainly fighting hard. It's trying to get round the back of that island there. Fortunately, it's coming away now. I'll just lower the other rod. Just to keep the line down on the bottom. It's coming in very fast at the moment. Certainly giving it a good account for itself. Ah. Another mirror. Oh, it's coming in. Might be foul hooks, it's coming in sideways. Just 
which lets them line out. Onto them unhooking that. It's hooked in the mouth. Real smashing fish. About seven pounds, probably. We won't weigh it, there's no need to weigh every fish. You only end up causing more damage, you take more slime off the fish if you weigh them unnecessarily. We'll just put it straight back. The great crested grebes kept their distance as the carp just kept coming. Yeah, the boil is away. Oh, lovely. Oh. This feels a good fish. That's on the left-hand rod, which is on the, the honey syrup boilies. It's come up on top now, so I'll just take it easy a little bit. I think we'll just sink the other line. So it's nicely laying on the bottom. So this fish doesn't pick it up. There she comes. It's another mirror. We needn't weigh this one, it's uh, not a huge fish, but it's still a lovely fish. All carp are appreciated, no matter what their size. Quite a little fat one, that one. <laughs> it's all good fun. Right, we'll put him back. The next fish was difficult to stop and in a few yards reached the edge of the sunken trees. If you do get a fish run into some branches, it's best just to, if the fish is pulling through the branches, you mustn't put too much pressure on it. But once the fish stops taking line, you can just gradually 
slowly pull it back. It's still in the trees. Oh, that's pulling a bit now.